I want you to imagine tending bar at an upscale restaurant, a popular place for professionals to gather for happy hour. Two patrons, a middle-aged man and a younger woman, have been chatting about work for a while, and they seem ready for another round. As you listen in for a break in the conversation, you casually overhear. You could just get knocked up. That would definitely add a year to your tenure clock if you're worried. Now, imagine this female colleague in a meeting with a member of the university's administration. She's recounting these incidents, hoping for this person to say she'll take action and do something about it. Instead, the conversation concludes by the administrator saying, thank you for letting me know. I'll document this in your file. Needless to say, I was that female colleague. These examples of sexist remarks and the commensurate silence upon recording said behaviors are sadly experienced by women in every industry and job role. Comments like these are both professionally demeaning and personally destructive and made me feel about an inch tall. At the time, I wasn't in a position to stand up for myself to call out these sexist remarks for what they are, or to demand any kind of support from my superiors. Frankly, it was one of my bosses who was harassing me, so I'd be damned if there was any path to resolution in my favor. I was a junior member of the organization, the only female in my department, who, according to my colleagues, was just supposed to look cute or get pregnant to have a shot. I've since left that organization and things have gotten better for sure. Still, there are one-off comments like, why aren't you at home taking care of your baby that I heard a week after returning from maternity leave? Or isn't it about time for you to have another that have still come my way? These comments are tone deaf and smack of ignorance and insensitivity. I'm a researcher of employees their workplaces, and ways in which organizations can make employees feel valued, heard, and respected. This has been a long-standing passion of mine, driven by my fundamental belief that all employees deserve to be treated fairly in all aspects of their life. This passion is also fueled by the sexist treatment I've encountered during my career with my own experiences of harassment and incivility serving as the inspiration for this work. My work specifically examines three elements of this phenomenon. Who gets targeted with these harassing experiences at work? The impact of bullying on the target's personal and professional well-being, and how to energize bystanders to take action when they hear something or say something that isn't quite right. I'd have a lot to say today to that imaginary passerby I described earlier in my story if I ever got the chance. This passion also fuels my work and mentoring with students. One of my responsibilities is to be the kind of mentor and role model that my students deserve in their professional careers. Role models who will see them, hear them, listen to them, and support them. I was fortunate to have some amazing mentors in graduate school, and I have some great role models in my work today, but I didn't have that in my early career. My boss was harassing me, and the administration didn't hear me. I can and want to do better and to be the kind of mentors that will help others, particularly women and students of color, flourish and grow. Two recent examples come to mind. My former graduate assistant and I have spent hours talking about his professional journey and true passion in life, supporting black fathers. He himself is the proud dad to two young daughters and his path to success has been shaped by hardship and blatant discrimination in the workplace. He leveraged his MBA, strong work ethic, and passion for helping others into a successful career as a human resources practitioner. His goals are to build a practice that supports black dads and builds community around families and fatherhood in the black community. The second example is a master's student about to graduate, the soon to be former president of a student organization I used to advise. She and I met when I was recruiting officers for the group. She submitted an application for secretary, but I was looking for the chapter president. She checked all the boxes, motivation, commitment, and a desire to be more involved, to do more and to give more. I offered her the role of president and thankfully she said yes. 
She overcame challenges associated with professional anxiety, as well as the COVID pandemic, to successfully lead the group, build community, and strengthen her own professional network in tremendous ways. She's going to be the commencement speaker for her college's graduation ceremony, a well-earned honor, and has her sights set on professional opportunities to come. The compassion and respect that I wished for in my early career days was completely lacking. And so in closing, it's from this place of wanting that I have worked to create professional relationships built on a foundation of listening, understanding, and trust. I reflect on this in each and every interaction and remind myself that this is an intentional choice. Do I want to be the kind of person that lifts others up or puts them down? Honoring that choice is both a privilege and a gift.